Hey, morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Um, today's video is going to be 71 Camaro Resto Mod Electrical Wiring Part 2. And I'm going to be talking about, to start off with, I'm going to be talking about the uh, windshield wiper and washer that I got installed yesterday. And I guess before we really get into the wiring aspect and everything, I wanted to talk about uh, bench testing. Um, probably a good idea, even if you got a brand new one, you might want to bench test it just to make sure it works because you don't want to get everything all bolted up and then find out you got a problem. But anyway, um, this drawing here, this section here is representative of those wires there. So you can see my black wire there, and that's, that's the low wire. And that's a ground, and then you have a light blue which is your high circuit. And that's that one right there on the, uh, the double connector. And then your 12 volts in right here, that's the white wire. And that white wire is doubled up at the, uh, the wiper washer area, but it pigtails over to the washer and provides power to the washer. So we're gonna get into the bench testing uh, part here. And, um, and I'll tell you a little issue I ran into. Um, and I'm going to try to explain this so I don't confuse myself or confuse anybody else. But um, for bench testing, I did run into an issue as far as park and shut off, depending on whether you're on low speed or high speed. And um, so let's talk about how I bench tested this uh, wiper washer. Okay, so to bench test the wiper, you're gonna ground the housing. And so you're gonna take your 12 volts and you're gonna put your negative somewhere on the uh, wiper housing. Uh, most of these wipers come with a, a ground tab right there. You can see that's actually riveted into the, uh, the body where I'm showing on the flashlight. So that's your ground and that's gonna be right there okay so how do we get the different speeds okay so for bench testing to get low speed on the wiper both the low and the high need to be tied together and sent to ground okay so that gives you your low speed Okay, so for high speed, you're only going to jump high to ground. So for low speed, you're going to ground both low and high terminals. For high speed, you're only going to ground this high terminal. And this right here is the, uh, the switch inside the car, so we, we're not really looking at that right now. We're just using these terminals here to bench test the... the uh, wiper washer. Now, like I said, during testing, I ran into a problem and I'm going to explain what I think is going on and why I think there's nothing wrong with this. And I put it on the car anyway. Okay. So when I was bench testing the motor, if I removed the low speed ground first and left the high speed ground connected, meaning it was still running. And then I disconnected the high it wouldn't shut off. It was getting its ground through the uh, the main body. And I'm pretty sure I know what was happening. The, it was traveling fast enough to where the motor, um, because it was in high speed, would bypass the park and off function on all the camming and the, and the gearing and the switching inside. So what I noticed was if I removed the grounds while it was in low, the motor was spinning slower, it parked and shut off just fine. So for mine, I just decided that I didn't really have a problem. Um, the way this thing works inside the car is you're going to go from high to low to off. So you won't have this issue. And the other reason I think it might have been happening is maybe this thing would park if you removed the high. And because you would have the transmission linkage, the wipers on the windshield, and you would have a lot of things... Um, 
providing drag that would cause the motor to pretty much instantaneously slow down and allow it to do the park and off function. But on bench testing, just the motor all by itself in the high speed mode, if you remove the, the grounds, the high speed ground, um, it wouldn't turn off. It was just, it would just keep going. So anyway, I decided that it didn't have a problem that the reason it was doing it was because of what I just mentioned. Anyway, I hope I didn't get anybody confused. Um, I made some notes um, for low speed. You're going to ground both the low and the high. So you take this low, this high. I know I'm kind of repeating myself here and you ground that and that gives you low speed. Now, if you want high speed, you just take this and ground it and you have high speed. And then, like I was saying, if you remove that ground before you go back to low, low speed, on bench testing, mine kept running. It would bypass the park and off feature. But like I said, I don't think it had a problem. It's just, it's not designed to shut down from high speed. So I made some notes down here. And yeah, so anyway, it's on there. So now we're gonna talk about the actual wiring and uh, American Auto Wire did change some color coding. So we'll talk about that first. Okay, so we're talking about color coding on the wiring. This is the original uh, GM wiring. You can see that the 12 volts coming in here where it's pigtailed is black with a yellow stripe. And then they pigtail that over to the, uh, the washer. Now, for some reason, um, American Auto Wire, the classic update kit, used a white wire. And then they jump that over to the washer pump. So why they used white instead of the black with the yellow stripe, I don't know. But you can see the white there. That's your 12 volts in. And it gets jumpered over to the washer. And here's my old harness here. And you can see that, yeah, it used to be black with a yellow stripe and pigtailed over to the washer. So on the American wiring, this is this is now white. And then they made a distinction between the wiper motor and the washer coloring. On my old harness, it's the same color, uh, light blue. And what they did is um, they went to a dark blue for the washer and a light blue for the motor. So... We'll talk about the connectors now, because there's some differences on the connectors. <clears throat> okay, so one of the connectors that uh, American Auto Wire provided is a little different than what the factory used. It's The factory had one indexing slot right there, and American Auto Wire gave me a connector with two indexing slots. So... Um, doesn't really matter but just something to be aware of um, this connector they gave was correct has two two slots and the connectors you can see there's a a stepped side on this this connector here okay so that's that's gonna face the firewall that step section so even if you try to plug it in backwards, it's, it's not going to go because of the indexing slot. So this is what gets used for the low speed connector. And like I said, I used all my doubles doing the wiper, so I don't have a, an actual example to show you other than what they're showing in the drawing here. Okay, so like I was just showing you, these are the indexing slots. So that's the orientation on the, uh, the washer. And then the indexing slots back here um, face the firewall. Okay, so the type of uh, spades that lugs, whatever you want to call them, um, these are called open barrel connectors. And this set of tabs here pinches the wire and this uh, outer pinches the insulation. You have to have a specialized set of crimpers to put these on. If you try to wing this with just a regular pair of pliers or uh, some needle nose, or if you're trying to use anything but the actual tool, no. 
Okay, so on the connector, you can see the tang sticking out on the back. And that tang um, gets lined up with a notch. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up very good. But anyway, there's a, a notch or a channel on the inside of this to where that tang goes down and locks in. Um, if you put this in the wrong way, it's not going to hurt anything other than it just won't lock into place. So just to double check after you put your spade inside the, uh, the connector housing, just give it kind of a tug and then uh, you'll know that it's in there correctly. Okay, so I think we discussed most of the, uh, the wiper wiring and, and some other little things you might want to consider. Um, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I did pull this motor off. Got it all cleaned up, re-greased things where it could be greased. I also checked the uh, brushes on the commutator, cleaned up the commutator, um, so the motor's all good. I did have to replace the uh, washer pump, and the pump itself was still in uh, really good shape. All right, what'd I do with it? Okay, I found it. Um, this is the washer, and it was in really good shape. Um, I actually took this apart and uh, the pump inside was still good. The O-rings are still good. The um, little rubber check valve was still good. Um, everything was good on this pump except for two things. Um, this plastic cam gear, I'm, I won't be able to show it on the camera, but there's a piece broke out back here where the spring tang goes. And it's just a little tiny piece, but that'll prevent this thing from, from working correctly. And then the other issue I had was the actuating arm here was showing some signs of wear. And it doesn't take much to throw this timing and the cam off if that arm pin is wore out. It won't work correctly. So I replaced the entire pump. Now when I got the brand new pump, this thing was oriented in a direction that I didn't want it to go. So on the new pump that I got, I... Uh, you can take the four screws out and you can put that uh, the pump head any way you want. You can have the, the ports facing up, you can have the ports facing down, straight back, whatever you want. You just take these four screws out and uh, yeah, so you can reorient that. When I got my new pump, it was on backwards compared to the old pump. So something else you might want to watch out for. And this right here is the old cover. 1971 and it's still pliable it's still soft it's in no danger of cracking or going bad and i'm pretty sure it's the original might not be but i'm, I'm pretty sure it is okay so i think we're all done talking about the wiper um i will mention one other thing that's going to be kind of related to the entire wiring project is i'm trying to split up the circuits separately and you know, the way the factory did it was they ran all the wiring together and then basically just wrapped it all up in electrical tape. So I'm going to kind of as much as possible separate each circuit so that if there's any trouble or I have to rewire or do something, I don't have to undo the whole harness. I just can work on that section only. So that's what I've decided to do there. Okay, so I've gone on enough about the wiper motor. Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.